everyone, welcome to New Tech, my name is Miles and it's wonderful to have you here. Today's video, I'm going to go through the final upgrades that I've done to my Core X wire machine, so stay tuned. So at the end of the last episode, I was a bit deflated on how the machine was performing and I certainly thought that there was more that I could get out of this machine at that stage. I've done a lot of tinkering to get this machine up to its absolute maximum, so I have been able to achieve 100,000 millimeters per minute, which is awesome and I'm so excited to show you that today. Now the main issue with that was that the belts were just way too tight. I had over tensioned the belts on this machine and unfortunately that just created too much friction and too much tension especially going around the front of the machine which is a, almost a 360 uh, turn for the belts and for this 5m uh, HDT belt this is just way too uh, fine for this to rotate around and for it to keep on track now when you do bend these belts around what you do notice is that the little teeth on here start to get closer together and that causes a huge issue when it's going around a small circumference um, and creating a lot of friction and tension within that axi itself. So that was the first thing I did was I backed off the tension and then suddenly I could then boost this machine up to its complete maximum and I was so excited that I got it that far. But I was still having so many issues, especially the belt running across those really long areas. So it's about a meter and a half, um, especially these inner belts here, they were trying to run across and when the machine would take off and slow down, that they would slightly bend, then creating a slight warped axis. And that was really frustrating me. So what I've done in the meantime was I've created this tiny little idlers that just sit on the inside halfway up the belt. All they are is just a bearing on a bolt and they just ride on the back of that bearing. And that's made a huge difference in the performance of the machine and being able to reduce the amount of issues that I was having with it, but also um, increase the amount of resolution that I was getting out. Now, it's still not perfect with the resolution, but I'm going to go through with you today some of the experiments that I've been doing on this machine just to test it out and see what it can do. So just before I jump into that, though, if you watch my episode number one, you'll notice that I really wanted to build a Core XY machine just to, just to investigate and just to explore this type of machine. Machine. It wasn't really built for any purpose. I just wanted to put it together because I was really curious about the, the kinematics of the machine and the limitations on a machine, especially this size. I didn't really know what type of belts I should be buying for it. Um, I kind of just guessed a lot of this stuff and thinking that it's going to be such a large machine, I wanted something that would have a lot more rigor within the teeth of the belt. That's why I chose to go with the 5M belts. Now, in reflection to that, I probably should have gone with something just a little bit less um, rigidity, um, something that could be tightened a lot more and allow those teeth to be flexed over a smaller surface area. But I'm going to go through those type of upgrades shortly. So let's jump into the first couple of things that I did with this machine. The first thing that I've implemented was the wireless system, and I was really happy with the wireless system. So essentially, the um, the ESP32 running Fluid NC, that's the, the root controller, that would send out the, the Z height axis and that would send it wirelessly over to the, the central part here. And that's powered by a 12 volt battery and just runs another ESP32 receiving the signal um, and also has a servo there to lift up the pen. Now that's really great for servos and pen plotting and different things like that. So that was really exciting to get that up and working and that worked out really nice. So I started with the first couple of examples is going back to the same drawing that I've been practicing on with this machine over the past episodes and there's a huge improvement in the quality and the consistency within this drawing itself so then I wanted to go bigger and leading up to Christmas time I wanted to create something that was um, maybe a bit more themed within Christmas so I wanted to make some wrapping paper and I thought that that was a great starting um, project for this type of machine because it is so large I could put a huge piece of paper down and get it to draw on it. Now the design wasn't crash hot, it wasn't amazing but it did show what the capabilities of this machine is and man did it perform it was fantastic it, it just shot around the core xy um it was quite aggressive and i was a little bit afraid if it was accidentally going to move off axis or do something but because i am using the closed loop stepper motors i never had an issue with it skipping a beat now 
Whilst that, that was fantastic and it did exactly what I asked for, I, I could get away with a lot of the resolution issues because I was using a thicker pen. So the second project that I wanted to showcase was a drawing that took me probably about six hours to do on Illustrator. I created this patchwork quilt a drawing it's uh, essentially just a continuous line drawing that I made and it took so long to do but I was really impressed because it looked amazing in the end um, but putting it on this machine I think it was done within about six seven minutes or so it absolutely powers its way through this uh, this drawing and I really love the outcome of this I mean I know the resolution isn't spot-on but it did contribute that kind of natural hand drawing uh, feeling that you do get out of these type of drawings and that was really impressive to put on this machine and see it do really intricate small work uh, one thing that I didn't consider though was that the page was going to move around you can see here that the page does move slightly as the drawings going through but the end result was absolutely fantastic and uh, and I'd certainly like to try that again and maybe put some different colors into it different types of paper but it was a great experiment to throw this machine into and see what it can do in such fine detail. So moving on from that, I did decide to put a laser module on this. Now I'm not a big fan of open laser modules just because that the smoke goes everywhere. There is the laser radiation. And so I'm not a big fan of the open laser systems, even though I've had reviews on them before and, and they're not too bad machines, but I just uh, don't like using them in the garage because there's just so much mess that goes everywhere. I did throw it on for about five minutes um, and cut just a small little sample piece out that I have here. Um, and uh, I mean, it's only a 10 watt laser module, so it can't go very fast. So to slow this machine down, it actually worked out really nicely to put that type of laser module on here. And I'm pretty happy with the results that came out of it. And it's really nice to know that you can have flexibility with these type of machines as well. But if I did put a higher power module on here that I wanted to go a bit faster, I do think that I'd have some slight issues with the resolution and being spot on. So after I finished that, I put that away and I wanted to show you what I did with this next section. So uh, quite some time ago, I ended up buying this, uh, this like a suction cap equipment and they usually use it in factories to pick up things and move things around. So it comes with this little suction cap and it comes with a hose and it goes through a solenoid which releases the, the, um, the back pressure off when you need it and it also comes with a suction pump. So it's a really nice little tiny system and it fitted on the machine um, flawlessly I didn't have to add anything extra. It could all run off the 12 volt system that I've got there with that battery. Um, but one thing that I did realize with this one is that as that pressure built up with uh, the air, that the solenoid found it very hard to release it. And I was using just these little um, ping pong balls. And what would happen is that that was uh, suction on there. But unfortunately, the, the solenoid found it a little bit hard to release that back pressure because there was a lot of pressure built up in there. So what I ended up doing is just adding a little magnet onto the front. You might be able to see it in some of these videos here, but I just added a, a tiny little magnet onto the front of the solenoid and that just assisted it with the strength in releasing it at the right time. Surprisingly, it worked flawlessly um, and I'm really happy with the result of that. Now, when I was putting this together, I didn't really know much about um, these suction cap systems, but I'm really happy that I did go through this process because I learned so much. And um, initially I just tried it with the, the vacuum pump on there. Um, but unfortunately, even though it was sucking it up, and when you turn the pump off, it didn't release that back pressure there, so it wouldn't release it from the actual suction pad itself and continually just it suctioned onto that uh, ping pong ball and wouldn't release it. That's when I realized that it was really important to add, add that extra solenoid valve just to release that back pressure and release the ball. So I came up with a really small program here which just allowed three different balls to be passed around. I think it was five different areas. Now, these little stands I created, so I created these little... Uh, acrylic stands to put the the ping pong balls on um, and I really like it because it has that three point of contact It's perfect for sphere objects um, I designed this quite some time ago um, and I never got around to actually using them so I'm really pleased that this project I found a really great use for it so these were cut on my Omtech K40 plus 
and I really love that laser cutter because it just um, it can cut pretty much anything that I put into it and especially clear stuff so I've got some projects coming up soon where I'm going to be using that machine a little bit more this came together it's just uh, three parts that just uh, puzzle piece together and then you can place it down a sphere object will just lay on top of it so that worked out really nicely so it worked out absolutely flawlessly so check this out this is the machine as it goes through it goes and picks up the different items at different points and passes on to the next one you can see it releases it quite nicely nicely and this is a kind of a loop program so you can play it over and over again and it worked every time um, but uh, I think it showcased really nicely both the z-axis working together with the solenoid valves and everything working wirelessly from the root CNC so I was really happy with this project and, and how it came out and I can certainly see a lot of uh, future uses with this type of application so just before I go any further a huge shout out to PCBWay for making these super amazing 3d printers parts in aluminium. I initially thought that these had some type of uh, infill in them but I ended up drilling into the base of one of these and it just was solid aluminium all the way so that's just absolutely incredible to come out of a 3D printer. I never thought that I would see that in my life but you can now get it um, for such an affordable price. They also do a whole lot of other manufacturing processes such as CNC milling, laser cutting etc but this is just phenomenal to see 3D printing in aluminium. It's so strong and so durable so thank you so much for PCB Wave for helping me out. As this is my last episode on this machine I never really intended to use this for anything major at this point. I did have in my head that it might turn into other machines such as a CO2 laser cutter or it could turn into um, some type of art plotter like painting plotter or pen plotter or something like that um, but I'm not too sure at this stage I never really created it for an exact purpose I'm more just an experimental so if I was to go ahead and improve this machine the first thing was that I would upgrade the belts now as I said before the the 5m belts they're just too aggressive they also have this metal threaded core in the middle of it and I, I do find that that creates too much tension and for it especially to go around those tight bends this here is an example of the the 3m belts now i haven't got enough of this to put on this machine nor do i have the idlers and the the pulleys to put on here to be sufficient for this type of belt but this is a, a far more superior belt to use on this type of machine it's got some nice smaller teeth so you'll notice that you can get more resolution out of your movements but you'll also be able to tension the belts a lot more using this 3m belt and i'd love to see on this machine i'll certainly give it a go in the future and i'll upgrade this machine as i see fit the second upgrade that i'd probably look at is supporting all of the hanging belts so that means that i could create some kind of active move axis that would follow these ones here and be able to support the belt halfway through as it's moving along and maybe even put some additional extra guides behind underneath this axis like I've got currently and hopefully with all those upgrades and changes with the tighter belt system with more support for each axis I could certainly see this machine becoming a more rigid and a more reliable machine um, but that's the only thing that's letting me down this stage so all in all, I've really enjoyed making this project. The Core XY machine is a really fascinating machine. And if you get a chance, you know, certainly dive into it and give it a go for yourself. They use them a lot for 3D printers because you can have them in a smaller amount of space, a thinner belt, make them much, much tighter. But certainly on a size like this, I'm not too sure if it's the right application. I have made these files available online. They're through my Patreon. If you want to check them out and download them for yourself, you'll see the links down below. Guys, if you've liked like this build and you like to see this type of experimentation and building of different types of machines and exploring them please give me a thumbs up and like this video because that's what keeps me going for these type of projects i've got a really exciting project in the pipelines that i'll be working on next so i need to remove this from the table so i can get back to using my cnc again so thanks very much for watching and i'll see you guys next time